Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. What do we got? Broken Border Forever, DEI, Dead or Alive, and Human Composting. Ugh. Boom! TGIF, people. It is Friday again. And what do we got? Sex offender in Rhode Island sentenced for illegally re-entering the U.S. And here we have the border broken forever because you can get uh, arrested, deported, and walk on back in. A man illegally in the United States, previously convicted of soliciting a minor in Rhode Island, was sentenced to prison Monday for unlawful re-entry. The United States Attorney's Office for Rhode Island said 52-year-old Carlos Gregorio Santos of Guatemala was deported in April 2019 and arrested by Providence Police September 29, 2023. So how long was he back in the country? How many people did he rape? Authorities said the arrest was a result of an investigation into an alleged altercation over dispute about wages, after which Santos provided police with a false name and a false date of birth. The attorney's office said the FBI later confirmed Santos's real identity, and he pleaded guilty on February 15th to a charge of illegal re-entry after removal. Officials said Santos was sentenced to 12 months and one day in federal prison, followed by one year of federal supervised release. What do you mean? How are they going to supervise him? Shouldn't they deport him? He faces deportation upon completion of his current term of incarceration per authorities. There you go. Boom. All right. So what else is going on? Tourists. Tourists, welcome. Absolutely. Terrorists, welcome. I don't know. But uh, in the United States, yeah, maybe. Chronic counterterrorism lapses at the border demand investigation and congressional intervention. All right. Let's see. The latest release into the American interior of FBI terrorist suspect who illegally crossed the U.S.-Mexico border, a twice-freed Afghan national man, free to roam America for 11 months until his capture, demands that the federal government regard this patterned problem as a chronic national security emergency. Yeah, you'd think so. Requiring elevation to the highest priority within the intelligence community, federal law, enforcement, and Congress. The case of the 48-year-old Mohammed Karwin, whom an overwhelmed Border Patrol freed into America on March 10, 2023, before agents could confirm the FBI watch list hit that initially flagged him and whom a swamped Texas immigration court freed a second time in February. In the seventh example of its kind, that can establish just from disparate public records a mortally dangerous failure pattern. Yeah, I mean, can't you just have the uh, top 10 most wanted FBI people that are terrorists and, uh, you know, just like, you know, at, at the very least, as they're crossing the border, just verify that it's not one of those guys. I mean, what a joke. Anyway, uh, yeah, we know it's a problem, and uh, so do the people crossing. Uh, good Lord, let's see what these people have to say about it. These are illegal migrants who have come to America. Let's see what they have to say. Did you have to pay a cartel? Yes. How much? Around 10000 10000 Yes. In fact, the American people is quite completely true. Who come into this country? They don't know. Well, okay, I'm good, but uh, how if they're not good? How they're killer, psychopath, else? Uh, no guarantee of that. Why? Like, like no, no security, no security check, no background check. No security check, no background check. You're worrying about who's crossing the border. Yes, yes. They are, of course, me without some like people are not look normal. Did you have to pay a cartel? Yes. How much? Around ten thousand. Ten thousand? Yes. Yeah. So there you have it. So this guy paid $10,000 to a cartel member, a coyote, who brought him to the border. And he's just waiting to cross, like, you know. And uh, Bill Malugin, I think it is. Yeah. Uh, he's there, and he's like, so what's going on? Where are you from? Uh, we covered it yesterday. There was Pakistani nationals, uh, Iranian nationals, tons of Chinese, and a uh, crazy amount of Indians just coming through. And they're paying ten grand each, so the cartel is just raking it in. And even this guy is like, what is going on? No one knows. There's no security here. And maybe I should just turn around and see if I can't get a refund. All right. Parents say school principal humiliated their son, barred him from delivering a patriotic election speech. St. Bonaventure Catholic School said they asked the student to remove negative comments from his speech before he could read it. Well, 
What kind of comments did he have? Parents of Huntington Beach, California middle school student are calling on their son's principal to be fired after they say he was discriminated against over his beliefs. St. Bonaventure Catholic school student Jimmy Hayward, who is running for Commissioner of School Spirit and Patriotism, <laughs> was completely humiliated after Principal Mary Flock barred him from giving his speech at a school election rally, his parents say. Hayward's mother, Hattie Ruggles, claims her son was told to remove all parts about patriotism, but uh, he's trying to be elected as the Commissioner of School Spirit and Patriotism. Yikes, I don't know what the principal's thinking there, Mary Flock. All right, so uh, he wouldn't be allowed to deliver it unless he did. In the speech, student talks about the importance of showing respect to veterans and paying attention to during the national anthem or when reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. Yeah, of course. Jimmy stood up to her and said he wasn't going to take the parts about patriotism out from his speech, Ruggles wrote in a Change.org petition calling for Flock to be fired. She then told him he would not be speaking. Jimmy sat on the stage with all other candidates while they said their speeches. Mary Flock directed the kids hosting the rally to skip Jimmy entirely. He was on the stage for an hour in front of his peers, teachers, parents, being completely humiliated. Absolutely ridiculous, Mary Flock. Yeah, go ahead and sign that change.org and get that person fired. How could you have a commissioner of patriotism and totally uh, disregard any patriot talk? Doesn't make any sense. All right. Get out of here, Mary Flock. Hope you get fired. Or at least learn a very stiff lesson about patriotism. Uh, Trump reveals new debate format for upcoming showdown with Biden. And what could it be? Well, Donald Trump revealed Wednesday that he has agreed to sit at a table with Joe Biden, despite his strong preference to stand, during their upcoming debates. So yeah, this is one of the stipulations that old Joe put in there because his legs are so brittle and wobbly that he can't stand up for more than a half an hour without getting tired. The seated format was a request made by the 81-year-old president campaign team. I hear now we're sitting at tables. I don't want to sit at a table. The 77-year-old former president told John Casimatidis and Rita Cosby during an appearance on the Cats and Cosby show. I said, no, let's stand. But they want to sit at a table, so we'll be sitting at a table as opposed to doing it the way you should be, in my opinion, in a debate. The presumptive Republican nominee for president explained that his personal preference would be to walk out to a podium and stand for an hour and a half or two hours. And Joe's like, his handler's like, well, you know, what we're going to in put in his system, they're talking about having a drug test to see if this guy's going to be all hopped up on some sort of stimulants. Uh, yeah, so perhaps they will. Biden sitting at a table, so that's not so good calling the seated debate format one of the many requests Biden campaign insisted on. But I agree to their request because I want to debate him. Yeah, of course, let's get this old fart on the stage and see what hot air he blows out of it. Um, if Biden gets through the debate, they'll say it was brilliant. Yeah, I, I, yeah I'm sure. Uh, it's unclear if the seated format will be for both debates. There might even be a third one. Um, we'll see. And there will also be a Veep debate, the VP, Vice President. But... Uh, Trump's VP candidate has not been uh, selected yet. All right, so Gert Wilders of the Netherlands uh, coming with that hot, juicy beef, just straight up dropping the truth. And this is it. Check it out. Hebben we dat bij de Joodse vorm die vecht van zijn bestaan? Of hebben we dat voor het islamitisch, extremistisch, terroristisch tuig die ze wil uitroeien? En ik zeg u, tot de laatste snik die ik heb, steun ik de staat Israël. So basically what this guy is saying is that he stands with the Jewish people until um, Hamas is exterminated because what do we do? Do we side with the people who are fighting for their existence or do we side with the terrorists who want to exterminate them? So yeah, very good Gert Wilders getting wild with his opinions and I'm sure a lot of people are going to be like, oh, that's racist. Uh. But no, this dude is the man, okay? He's standing up for it. He's telling people the truth. Boom. What else do we got? All right. What's going on here? The truth about MLG's so-called zero emissions uh, fire truck. Recent reports reveal that the celebrated all electric or zero emissions fire trucks being lauded from San Diego to Portland to Albuquerque, New Mexico, are not as environmentally friendly as advertised. Each of these new fire trucks purchased with the assistance of federal funding is equipped with a diesel engine to ensure functionality when the electric battery is depleted. 
This revelation highlights a significant discrepancy between the marketed image of these trucks and their actual operational design. The report indicates that each of these supposedly zero emission trucks includes a diesel engine to guarantee that it can still pump water or drive if electric battery runs out. Furthermore, the cost of these hybrid trucks is significantly higher than their all diesel counterparts with a price tag that is 40 to 50% more. So you're talking about a $100,000 fire truck, now it's 150,000. And guess what? They use the diesel engine just as much, I'm sure. This would be laughable if so much money wasn't being wasted on such a big lie, stated Daniel Turner, founder and executive director of Power of the Future. Turner expressed his frustration emphasizing that politicians celebrating these trucks as all electric are either misleading the public or unaware of the truck's true nature. Overspending tax dollars on a product and then misleading voters is nothing less than pure fraud, he added. Absolutely. One notable example highlighted in the report is the purchase of an all-electric fire truck for $1.8 million, which... 400000 was funded by the federal grant. Despite the truck being touted as zero emissions, vehicle by Democrat New Mexico Governor Michelle Luan Grisham, the inclusion of a diesel engine undermines this claim. Yeah, so there it is. Uh, as cities across the nation strive to meet environmental goals and reduce carbon footprints, the debate over the true benefits and costs of these hybrid fire trucks is likely to continue. Turner and others at Power of the Future call for greater accountability and honesty from public officials regarding the capability and limitations of such high-cost investments. Absolutely, that would be wonderful to have accountability and honesty coming from our politicians, but guess what? It's almost incongruent. Uh, UNC system board of governors votes to repeal dei doa get out of here they're finally realizing how stupid this is that it's all uh you know just washing over the truth of merit is how you hire someone not because they're brown biden goes ahead and gets a whole bunch of brown supreme court judges in there because you know we got to have equality of color not equality of merit so the Board of Governors for the University of North Carolina system voted Thursday to repeal and replace its existing diversity and inclusion policy that applies to 17 schools the board oversees. The new policy reverses one that was adopted in 2019 that sought to foster an inclusive environment and required each school to submit diversity and inclusion reports to the Board of Trustees every year. The new policy now requires UNC schools to ensure equality of all persons and viewpoints and promote non-discrimination in employment practices. Yeah, because guess what? When you want diversity, equity, and inclusion, you're going to exclude certain groups of people. Asians and white people, typically. Uh, it also mandates that all UNC schools comply with a series of amendments passed by the North Carolina General Assembly in the past year that limit what can be discussed or taught about race, racism, and sex in government institutions. Absolutely. And when it doesn't, you have this, a failed medical school. How racial preferences supposedly outlawed in California have persisted at UCLA. Apparently up to half of UCA, UCLA medical students now fail basic tests of medical competence. Whistleblowers say affirmative action illegal in California since 1996 is to blame. Yeah, affirmative action is hiring black people because they've been oppressed. Or people of color, BIPOC. You know, need not apply unless BIPOC, black, interracial, people of color. All right, long considered one of the best medical schools in the world, the University of California, Los Angeles, David Geffen School of Medicine, receives as many as 14,000 applications a year. Of those accepted, just 173 students in 2023 admission cycle, a record low acceptance of 1.3%. The median matriculant took difficult science courses in college, earned a 3.8 GPA, and scored in the 88th percentile of the medical college admissions test. Without those stellar stats, some doctors at the school say students can struggle to keep pace with the demanding curriculum. So when it came time for the admissions committee to consider one such student in November 2020, a black applicant with grades and test scores far below the UCLA average, some members of the committee felt that this particular candidate, based on the available evidence, was not the best fit for the top tier medical school, according to two people present for the committee's meeting. Their reservations were not well received. <laughs> When an admissions officer voiced concern about the candidate, the two people said the dean of admissions, Jennifer Lucero, exploded in anger. Did you not know African-American women are dying at a higher rate than everybody else? Lucero asked the admissions officer. These people said the candidate's score shouldn't matter, she continued, because we need people like this in our medical school. Yeah, we need stupid black people in our school so more black people can die. Because, guess what? Incompetence in the medical profession will lead to death. What a moron Lucero is. Even before the Supreme Court's landmark affirmative action ban last year, public schools in California were barred 
by state law from considering race in admissions. The outburst from Lucero, who discussed race explicitly despite that ban, unsettled some admissions officers, one of whom reached out to other committee members in the wake of the ins We are not consistent in the way we apply the metrics to these applicants, the official wrote in an email obtained by Washington Free Beacon. This is troubling. Absolutely. I wondered, the official added, if this applicant had been a white male or an Asian female for that matter, whether we would have had that much discussion? And the answer is no. You wonder no less. Uh, since, or no more, since Lucero took over medical school admissions in June 2021, several of our colleagues have asked the same question in interviews with the Free Beacon and complaints to UCLA officials, including investigators in the university's discrimination prevention office. Faculty members with firsthand knowledge of the admissions process say it has prioritized diversity over merit, resulting in progressively less qualified classes that are now struggling to succeed. Race-based admissions have turned UCLA into a failed medical school, said one former member of the admissions staff. We want racially... We want racial diversity so badly, we're willing to cut corners to get it. Boom. I have students on their rotation who don't know anything, a member of the admissions committee told the Free Beacon. People get in and they struggle. I wouldn't normally talk to a reporter, but there's no way to stop this without embarrassing the medical school. There you have it. Good job, UCLA. And Lucero needs to lose her job because she's a woke, DEI-pushing loser. California to legalize human composting by 2027 as residents seek environmentally healthy burials. Yikes, the human composting industry may not be legal yet in California, but residents found a workaround by flying the bodies of their deceased loved ones to a state where it is. Yikes. UK government uh, preparing whatever. All right, this is just whatever. Is there any actual information there? No. So uh, apparently that's the deal. Read it on foxnews.com. California to legalize composting by 2027. Here's Joe, old Joe. California has already voted to legalize composting of human remains in 2027, but some residents are not willing to wait that long. LA Times wrote about California residents Blair Van Valkenburg being one of a growing number of residents composting the remains of their loved ones. But this kind of burial, natural organic reduction, won't be legal in California until 2027. So Van Valkenburg... Uh, paid to fly her husband's body to Washington, the first state to legalize human composting in 2020. Until 2027, it appears that there will be a budding industry of collaboration to facilitate the compost burials for those who live in California. And first, what will provide uh, probably be other such collaborations, the family-owned Clarity Funerals and Cremation Anaheim has partnered with Return Homes to offer a package deal for people in Southern California who want to compost their loved ones in Washington. So yeah, what's going to happen is that they're going to create these uh, pods that they're going to bury and they'll grow or they're just going to mulch up the uh the body and just go ahead and spray it all over like compost mix it with some uh some cow manure and just go ahead and blast it all over the farms and you'll be eating your loved ones uh the following uh harvest all right what else we got boom potentially habitable exo venus with earth-like temperatures discovered Astronomers have made the rare tantalizing discovery of an Earth-like exoplanet 40 light years away that may be just a little warmer than our own. The new pick, well, there's probably, probably climate change going on there, or maybe there are humans there causing carbon to explode. Blah, 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 blah. The potential habitable planet named uh, Glyas 12b orbits its host star every 12.8 days. Mm. Uh, it is comparable in size to Venus, so slightly smaller than Earth, and has an estimated surface temperature of 42 degrees Celsius, which is lower than most of the 5,000-odd exoplanets confirmed so far. Wow, 5,000. This is assuming it has no atmosphere, however, which is the crucial next step to establishing if it is habitable. It may have an Earth-like atmosphere, one more akin to Venus, which experienced a runaway greenhouse effect that made it 400 degrees Celsius. Yeah, hellhole, no atmosphere, or perhaps a different kind of atmosphere not found in our solar system. Yeah, so a bunch of whatever coming here from space will never get there. Our only option is to leave Earth and go to Mars. So Elon, get on it. Let's get there. TGIF, people. 10,000 likes. The mask comes off. Reveal the true monster. Sigma Tiger, signing out.